We got all our data together, we got it categorized into tiers. We got two key metrics, play count and listeners. In this video we're trying to find out if it's gonna help if I try and boost my track play count. If a boy bots to listen to my track on repeat, what if I ask my friends to? So if I do it, is it gonna promote my track or demote it? We'll use some data science and Python to find it out. We also have virality as a product of listeners and play count. How many times a listener listens to a track? And there's tiers for play count, for listeners, for virality, and also for track count. Mostly it's tiers 1 to 5, and for track count it's either below 50 tracks or above 50 tracks. In the previous videos we pulled some data out from Last FM's API, processed them, prepared them for analysis. Now we got a huge data set ready to be analyzed. We're now gonna make a huge number of scatter plots to see if there is any dependencies there, if there is any trends, if there is any clusters or patterns, something we could test later on something we could base our summaries on. Let's explore that. We're importing the matplotlib pyplot. The plots we had in the previous video were interactive plots. We could interact with them, see what data points meant and all that. This plot is not interactive. It takes up less memory space and we're gonna have many of them. I'm not sure this laptop here is capable of processing this many scatter plots if they're interactive. So non-interactive scatter plots. Oh, by the way, I'm Padisha and I'm the greatest expert in coding, music and data science in the entire world and maybe even on YouTube. So we're listing the attributes, the tiers, and we'll use the attributes to color the dots. You'll see it in a minute. And we'll have the X variable and the Y variable. The Y variable will have our key metrics, track play count and track listeners. And we'll compare track play count against every one of these and then track listeners against every one of these, coloring the dots with these. We're gonna have two sets of scatter plots, one for track play count, the other for track listeners. And then for every one in those, build a scatter plot. So we're gonna have four scatter plots in a row, one for each of the coloring options here. Set the axis, have the legends, titles, everything, because it's gonna be a lot of charts. It's hard to decipher the charts if they're not labeled properly. There we go, chart number one, showing us track play count against artist play count, and they're all the same. You see the picture is the same in all four of its instances. The only difference here is how the dots are colored. Here the coloring is artist play count tier. Here is the artist listeners tier, that's the artist virality tier, and that's track count tier, either above 50, which is 1, or below 50 tracks, which is 0. It doesn't look like you're getting more plays just being generally a much played artist, so if you have huge play counts, it does not necessarily bring you huge track play counts. If you as an artist have had a lot of track streams, it doesn't mean that your next track is gonna have more streams just because you have a huge backlog of streams. So that's good news for this means you don't have to be popular to become popular. Tiers are predictably distributed here. You can see them ranging from 1, the purple one, then 2, 3, 4, 5, left to right. Overlapping a little bit, but generally the pattern is left to right, except for this weird outlier cluster here. That's tier 4, artist listeners. That's the kind of patterns we're looking for. That's something we're gonna investigate in later on. And also having below 50 tracks seems a bad idea, so you gotta be prolific to be more successful, because the success is to the right and above that. Next one, we're still looking at track play count and scatter plotting it against artist listeners. So do artist listeners in any way predict track play count? And it does look like more artist listeners does not increase your chances of higher track play count. So having a huge following does not mean your next track is gonna be more popular. Which is also good news for new aspiring artists. You don't have to be popular to become popular. You can see that tier 5 artist play count is all over the place overlapping with every other tier. As well as here, tier 5 for artist virality is all over the place as well. Once again there's a weird outlier cluster for tier 4 artist virality. We'll see what it is later in the video. Same pattern for those below 50 tracks per artist. The bottom left corner for them. Next one is track play count against artist virality. This one's a mess. Can't really say anything. Still, the tiers go left to right, top down, depending on what kind of tiers they are. Except for this outlier here, tier 4 for artist listeners. Once again, it's a weird cluster. And not just because it's a different tier, but because there's a huge gap between the majority of the data and this outlier here. No idea why the gap, gotta find it out. It's not supposed to be distributed like that. If you have data so far out to the right, there gotta be a reason for that, because it's not filled with other data in between. There has to be something here. 
but there's nothing. So these must be really, really special. Anything with virality over a thousand really do need investigation. Also, it doesn't seem like being an overall viral artist increases your chances of success. It's all over the place again. And also make sure you have over 50 tracks. It's still the only 100% sure advice here. And also this video is a part of a series, so follow the link in the description to find the entire playlist of data science related videos. Okay, that's a straight line because we're comparing track play count with track play count. Once a variable meets itself, it turns into a line. It's a 100% correlation. This picture, we've seen this picture in the previous video. There's track listeners and track play count. We're comparing them and we see that more track listeners mean higher track play count. That's logical. A listener listens to a track at least once. So the more people listen to a track at least once, the more streams your track is gonna get. But there's a weird bloop here. Not sure what it means. It's like a whale spitting out the water. I I'm not sure what this is. It's a, a little fountain of data points. We sure need to investigate into it. Okay. <laughs> what? Track virality, track play count. I'm not sure if there's anything I can say here. Nothing to really see here. We could get rid of these outliers and investigate there, but there are literally a couple of outliers, so we don't really care for them. Nothing fun here. That's more fun. Track listeners compared with artist play counts. So up to a certain point, the more track streams you have overall as an artist, the higher your track listeners is gonna be. Except for a certain point, somewhere at about 0.8 billion streams, your track listeners start to go down for some reason. No idea why. Also, this outlier here, tier 4, being funky again, there's gotta be a sweet spot in artist play count, which almost guarantees you success. Because after a certain point here, you still have a chance to have zero track listeners, while you have quite a backlog of artist play count. But after like 0 0.2, 0 0.25 or something, it starts to go up. No zeros here. There is some correlation there. So this outlier and the trend for listeners to go up after a certain play count level. Oh, this one's nice. This one's visually pleasing. With artist listeners, your track listeners go up. The more followers you have as an artist, the more listeners your track is gonna get. But it works the other way around. The more listeners your tracks get, the more listeners you have in total. So correlation does not necessarily mean causation. Higher listeners does not necessarily mean that it'll cause you hire track listeners. It does mean that, generally speaking, the more track listeners, the more artist listeners. But one does not necessarily cause the other. There can even be a third factor influencing both at the same time. Who knows? Also an outlier here, we would expect this go purple, red, green, yellow, blue, left to right. It goes purple, red, green, and then it looks like the blue is scattered all across the data set behind the dots there, so you can see the blue peaking through here as well as yellow but yellow is farther out to the right than blue that's tier 4 again artist virality behaves weirdly and the last one is track listeners against artist virality there's an outlier again here already seen that it kind of follows the previous patterns another thing to note is that the density of dots above about 100 in artist virality is going down so the more virality you have after about 100 the fewer listeners you're gonna have that means there's a sweet spot in artist virality that you shouldn't go above. Fun fact! Okay, we've seen that, that just flipped over, and this one is weird again. It's kind of the same as for track play count. I got these conclusions summarized in a text format. You can actually go visit the link in the description that leads you to a Google Colab notebook that has all this code in it. So you can run the code, check for yourself, use the same data or use different data to compare my conclusions to yours. See if I'm right, see if I'm wrong. I don't mind being wrong. That's what science is about. That's the correlations. We had some questions about some of the patterns we saw. Let's investigate it. Tier 4 kept giving us outliers, the yellow bands on the right. Let's see what they are. Filter out anything that has the play count above one and a half billion and also the fourth tier in terms of artist listeners. And filter out unique artists. We're investigating into this situation, what this cluster is. And it says BTS. The whole cluster, the entire outlier is BTS. How about we map BTS on the general scatter plot. Let's make it say BTS if it's BTS and everyone else if it's not. Scatter plot listeners and play count highlighting BTS. Well, it does look like it's a cluster of data points. Everyone else is in blue, BTS is in red. Let's see what tracks they are. Okay, so that's butter. What's this one? These dots don't behave normally either because there is a cluster here and there's these guys here. Okay, that's life goes on. This one is dynamite. Let's get 
rid of anything above 40 million streams to zoom in on the data set. Okay, that's much more clear. How about we try and grab the rest of the data around BTS? Because these do look similar. They show the similar behavior. The pattern is kind of the same. How about we see if we can find a common trait in both this little tail of dots here and BTS. So let's take a certain margin around the BTS data points. For play count, we're using confidence interval. For listeners, we use three standard deviations. We're finding minimum and maximum boundaries for coloring the dots. And let's assign different labels. So it used to be BTS and everyone else. Let's add almost BTS. If the play count is above the minimum play count and listeners are below a certain maximum of listeners. So a certain virality pattern here. Play count and listeners. Okay, we nearly managed to grab all the data points. Now we have BTS in green, almost BTS in red, and everyone else in blue. Let's see the actual data points. Let's see what tracks they are in an actual data table. Here's the data set. It's Blackpink, Twice, Red Velvet, Charlie Puth, but featuring BTS. So it does look like they are K-pop. All of these, or nearly all of these, are K-pop. Or they feature a K-pop artist. How about we isolate every single K-pop artists. I went to Wikipedia, went to K-pop, found lists of K-pop artists, opened the list, copied all of these names for every single list, for every decade. You get the idea. That's a lot of names. I copied it, put it in a CSV format. There it is. Almost 13 and a half hundred artist names. It has some junk information in it like percents and years and alphabet. That's the year. I didn't want to copy individual data sets so I copied just the entire page. So we'll clear the years. There's also so letters of alphabet will clear them out. So if the length of artist name is more than one character and it's not V, because V is a K-pop artist as it turns out. So unless it's V and it's shorter than two characters, we'll filter it out. Then if it has edit, like here, if it has this edit appendix, filter it out. So it, it's a year label. Then we turn it into a list and see that we have five lines short of 1300. So K-pop, what is K-pop? It's Korean pop music. Popular music made in South Korea. So it's an SK pop if you wish. So South Korean pop music. I'm pretty sure you know at least a couple of names. I did some research and I found that their fans are pretty much fanatics. What they do is they compete in whose idol is the most idoliest idol of all. They make sure their idols make a lot of streams of their music. They literally decipher algorithms to know how long a track should be played until the play count is counted. They figure out at which volume it is better to play a song for it to faster be counted as played. So they ramp up the numbers to compete whose idol is the best. Now we map the entire data set with ones if it's in the K-pop artist list and zero if it's not in the list. So that's what we get. Scatter plot the whole thing. There's the K-pop cluster. That's a certain pattern there. We almost grabbed the entire outlier tail. And there's two data points here. Who are they? Okay, that's cream and sunshine of your love. No K-pop. That's that's not K-pop at all. That's Cream the band, not Cream the Korean rapper. So remove Cream. But there's also some data points here that are not yellow, but they do look like they're K-pop. Jin. Is that someone from BTS? Jimin. Jungkook. I'm pretty sure they are all K-pop artists. Alright, let's isolate dots that show the same behavior as K-pop artists, but are not on our K-pop list. So fun investigating in K-pop. It's much more fun than I thought it would be. Not thing is the dancing phenomenon, TikTok dancing. You're gonna have to repeatedly listen to a track to learn the dance and practice it and then film it. So these are the main sources of play counts for K-pop. Juice World, Blackpink, twi Blackpink, Twice, Charlie Puth featuring BTS. So that's either somebody featuring a K-pop band or a K-pop artist that for some reason wasn't listed in Wikipedia as a K-pop artist. These are K-pop artists, the rest of them are not. Adding the newly found K-pop artist names to the list, redoing the whole thing and replotting it. Another thing is K-pop is a very industry-based thing. There's huge corporations in South Korea that manage artists. There's pop music schools that young people go to and success is nearly guaranteed once you're in the industry. But there's a human rights issue there because the contracts that the young people have to sign are really, really limiting. They can't marry, they can't even date. Sometimes it's like borderline slavery. So there's an ethics issue there as well. That's better. That's a pretty accurate representation of what is K-pop and what is not K-pop. And you can clearly see that K-pop artists don't get many 
many listeners. They do get huge, huge numbers in terms of track play counts, but their following is pretty limited. There's a lot of artists that have many, many more listeners than K-pop bands. But the K-pop listeners listen to every track so many times that they end up high up here in this little yellow tail. Anyways, I like the music, I like the dances, I really adore the whole image, except for this human rights thing. This sucks really bad. All right, enough K-pop, <laughs> let's move on. You remember this outlier here? So that's artist listeners, track play count, and artist virality tier. What is that? Let's isolate those and see what they are. All of them are black eyed peas, like literally. Entire data set is black eyed peas, <laughs> what? Let's chart the same scatter plot and color the black eyed peas. Nothing fancy, what tracks they are? Boom, boom, pow. I'm not sure I've heard this one, have you? Moving on, it just follows the general trend. Artist virality over 1200. All of them are BTS, pretty clear. Let's close some of the open questions. We mentioned some trends of having a higher metric, meaning having a different metric also going up. So let's check that. Let's build a correlation matrix for these measurable parameters, track parameters, artist parameters, and see if there's any connections between them. Building a correlation matrix, the deeper the blue, the higher the correlation. Anything above 0.5, we'll think it's considerable. Getting rid of anything below 0.5 and anything that equals one and that's what we get if you want to have higher track play count a proven way is to attract more listeners each of the listeners is going to listen to your track at least once upping your numbers then there's artist play count artist listeners that influence that but the connection is weaker this one's barely noticeable same for track listeners if you want to have higher listeners get higher play count that's the same correlation we've seen here artist listeners generally means more track listeners so the bigger of an artist you get the more play your tracks are gonna get but this correlation is not necessarily causal there might be no cause and effect relations between that and one may not necessarily be causing the other having more track listeners might mean you have more overall listeners as an artist I'm not sure which of them comes first causing the other or if there's something else affecting both so in the artist play count kind of affects track listeners not sure if this is meaningful All right let's see uh, bad correlations meaning everything below 0.5 where we can't say there is a no noticeable correlation. All of these are related to artist virality and that means that boosting your virality is useless. If for some reason you publish a track and you make every one of your friends put it on repeat and listen to it over and over again, this makes no sense. This does not boost your track play counts or track listeners. This doesn't lead to you being more successful. So that's not the strategy we need. I got this entire code book linked in the description. Find a Google Colab notebook, play with the code, try it for yourself and see if any of this makes sense. Right, let's wrap it up. We've seen many scatter plots with colored tiers and each time we see that tier 1 is considerably lower than every other tier. So getting out of tier 1 kind of means you get closer to success. Given the chances to go out of tier 1, you're pretty likely to be successful actually as a musician. If you watched the previous video, it exactly tells you the percentages. It's around 10% chance of getting out of tier 1 to the rest of the tier. As long as you have 50-ish tracks in your backlog, which is kind of good news. It tells us to work harder, be consistent and keep going. Also, we found that we can use both play count and listeners as our key metric to measure success, to measure artist performance. Neither of the two works well alone because we can boost one and not boost the other. Listeners being the predictor to play counts. Another fun conclusion is K-pop is weird. <laughs> That's all I can say. They're boosting their track play rates with a relatively few number of listeners. That's a very specialized promotion model, which kind of works because you get paid for your play counts. You don't get paid for your listeners. But having too few listeners with ginormous play counts does kind of look suspicious. Almost as if it's bot-generated streams. The practical conclusion here is that cheating virality won't work. If you're not a K-pop idol, restreaming your content or making your friends listen to your tracks won't take you closer to your success. Instead, go about attracting new listeners. That seems to be the only foolproof strategy. Right, that's pretty much it. In the next video, we're gonna be analyzing temporal characteristics like date and time, time of day and day of week and day in months and month and anything that's related to and track duration as well. So much fun ahead. And in the meantime, I hope you you have enough useful information to apply to your own tracks and I really do hope your own tracks succeed because you are awesome.
you are.